Hello everyone, I will now share uh, the idea about the population and sample which is uh, very critical in conducting uh, research studies specifically those that are quantitative in nature. So this is the essence or the relationship between population and sample. If we say uh, population it is the total number of the individuals in the specified area or the total number of individuals that you are planning to make as the participant of your research. While if we say sample, this is just the part of a population that must be chosen uh, with the particular consideration depending on the nature of your population, the nature of your investigation. So, there are advantages of using samples from the population which I'll be sharing with you later. But let's first uh, get familiar on some of the terminologies that are uh, often being confused specifically uh, for the respondents subjects informants and participants so based on my experience i have noticed that uh, these uh, terminologies are sometimes interchangeably used but i think there's specific uh, time when to use the term respondents subjects informants and participants so more often uh, than that respondents are uh, used in those survey studies in uh, quantitative studies so subjects are point of uh, investigations specifically when you are observing the effect of a variable and informants are those that are giving details specifically giving data in qualitative studies while it is safer to use the term participants para sa ating mga research studies okay so uh, going back uh, let's discuss first uh, what's population and what's sample I'll be sharing with you a, a very good uh, resource from MHLV 2016, a manual for selecting sampling techniques in research. So let's start. So population, it refers to all the members who meet the particular criterion in your research. So an element depends on the nature of population. For example, the nature of your population is uh, students, so an element of that population will depend on that nature. It means the element that you are going to choose are also coming from those students. And a population depends on the nature of the investigation. It means that if you are going to investigate a variable, the population should greatly relate to that variable. Let's say you are uh, investigating the attitude of parents towards the new uh, modality or the learning delivery modalities under the new normal. So I think the population should come from or should com be composed of parents because uh, it's their perspective that you are uh, going to investigate and none others. Okay. Next, population could be homogeneous or it could also be heterogeneous. It becomes homogeneous if all the elements are similar to each other. And it becomes hetero if there's specific element that's not similar to all other uh, elements in your investigation. So, for example, it is homogeneous if all the characteristics described in the criteria are met. 
while uh, it is hetero, if one characteristic variable is not the same among all others. So, papaano natin i-contextualize ito? For example, all of the element na tinutukoy natin dito is for your students. So, magiging siyang uh, homogeneous kung silang lahat ay tulad-tulad. While it is heterogeneous kung merong nagiging or naiibang aspect pagdating dun sa pagiging nilang uh, estudyante. So, variables that make population hetero are like in gender, pwedeng magkakaiba sila, or age, nagkakaiba-iba sila, ethnicity, nagkakaroon din ng pagkakaiba-iba. Okay, next. Pagdating naman dito sa uh, sample natin, just like uh, what's illustrated earlier, smaller number of people selected from a population for investigations purpose. So, bakit ba magandang magkaroon ng sampling? So, why is it good to use sampling? So, remember that sampling is a process to extract sample from the population it uh, or we do sampling because sometimes it is impossible to assess every single element of a population for example you have 2500 uh, population so it i think it is impossible to approach all those 2000 or 20500 uh, members of the population However, the more the sample is representative of the population, the higher it uh, comes to its accuracy. So it means that it is generalizable if the sample is representative of its population. If we say generalizable, the findings that you can obtain from the sample is true for the entire population. However, there could be uh, uh, errors in something process like systematic errors where uh, the population is either overrepresented in one characteristic or underrepresented with other characteristic or in other uh, variables. It could uh, also happen that there is a sampling bias when samples does not truly reflect the characteristic of the population. So we should avoid this uh, sampling errors and sampling bias. For our next uh, lesson, we will uh, go with the types of sampling. But uh, before that, let me share uh, one of the commonly used uh, sample size determination in terms of uh, computing how many samples should uh, you get based on the total number of population. So, uh, commonly used is this Slovin's formula with n over 1 plus n squared. So we have sample size, population size, and the margin of error. For example, you have a sample size uh, or population size of 2,000 or 20,500. So following the formula, you have 0 0.05 as the lab margin for error and then squared 0 0.0025 times 20,500 so you got 51.52 plus 1 so 52.25 and then 20,500 your total number or total population you divide by 52.25 and then you get 392.34 so wala namang uh, 0.34 na person. So, you have 392 as your sample size. So, imagine from 2,000 or 20,500, instead of uh, you approach this 20,500, you will just get, uh, you must have a respondent or participant of only 392. So, that's how you determine a sample size. However, there are other ways to determine uh, sample sizes, but this one is uh, the one uh, most commonly used. So, uh, let's proceed for our next topic, the different sampling technique.